In this presentation, we're going to record the customer payment and deposit. In other words, we have an invoice that happened in the past. We're going to have a customer payment that we're going to receive on that invoice. We're going to take that payment and combine it with other payments and then go to the bank and make the deposit with it, recording that in our system as well. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to go ahead and open up our trial balance by going to the accounting drop down and open up that trusty trial balance, that TB. Once that opens up, we're going to duplicate the tab by going on up to the tab up top, right clicking on it and duplicating that tab, bringing the trial balance to the right hand side, and then we'll be entering data on the left hand side. Let's go on down to our flow chart now. We're going to go down to our flow chart. This is in QuickBooks Desktop. Just taking a look at the flow chart here. We have entered an invoice or invoices in the past. We're now going to be recording the receive payment. Remember, at the receive payment at this point in time, it will be reducing the accounts receivable. The other side could go directly into the bank account, the checking account. However, if we want to group them in a different fashion as, the, as in the fashion that we uh, receive them, as we deposit them, then we may want to put it into the clearing account, some other clearing account, and then take it to the bank uh, and group them in some fashion or the same fashion that we expect them to be seen on the bank statement in our system as well. We're going to do that because it's a little bit more complicated of a system. So again, if you receive the payments and you expect them to be appearing on your bank statement in the same format as uh, you receive them, you could deposit them directly into the bank at this point. We're going to do more of a two-step process uh, in those situations to be in those situations where the deposit in the bank will differ in some way and we'll have to group them and use a two-step method to achieve that goal. Back to our uh, zero uh, account and we're going to now change the date in the trial balance. Bring that on up to uh, February 29th because that's the period that we will be working in. When we do the receive payment then it's going to be increasing not the checking account but the clearing account up top and the other side will be decreasing the accounts receivable then we'll make the deposit which will just simply take it out of the clearing account put it in the checking account in the grouping that we expect to see on the bank statement let's go on back to the trial balance then and record this we're going to go back to the dashboard and within the dashboard we're going to have the invoices and the receipts of the payment section and that's going to be here invoices owed to you we want to take a look at those that are awaiting payment. So we're going to go into those that are awaiting payment. We're going to be picking up this 851.25. So I'm going to select that item or we can go into it here. So let's actually go into it. I'll go into it in this format. And then the payment item is down below. So if we're going to have the full payment, it'll be down below. We're going to say the full th item will be paid off. The date of the payment we are going to say is the 26th. So let's go to the 26th the paid uh, two it's going to be going into our clearing account and then we're going to move it into the checking account we could have a reference uh, item here if we need to and so what that's it for now we're going to go ahead and say add so let's add this item and that should move it from the awaiting payment to the paid section within the invoices so that's going to move it over here uh, to the paid section here it is that 851 if we then go to the trial balance, back up to the trial balance, we're going to go into the clearing account. Uh, it should be increasing the amount here in the clearing account by that 851. So let's go in there and just double check that. So we'll go in here. We're going to scroll down and see if we can find that 851. So there it is increasing. If we go back over and then take a look at the accounts receivable, the account representing the customers that owe us money within the accounts receivable, it should now be going down because we have received a payment on it. So within the accounts receivable, if we go into that account, we should see a decrease in the accounts receivable for that 851, that 851.25. Scrolling down here, let's take a look and there it is. There's the 851.25 there as well. All right, so let's go back up to the trial balance. Let's do this again, going back to the first tab now. We're going to go back to the first tab and we're going to go on down. The next item that we are going to be collecting on is going to be this uh, two, uh, 297.50. We're going to receive the payment or the rest of the payment on this 297.50. Now you'll note this was one that we had a prepayment on. Uh, and then we issued the invoice. We had a prepayment. We issued the invoice. And then there was still, there's still at this point in time, the, the 297.50 outstanding. So in other words, if we select this item, 
you'll see we have the invoice which totaled out to the to the 54750 and then we had this payment of the 250 that actually was a prepayment so the prepayment actually had happened before then we made the invoice and then we owed this uh and so then we tied it back out and there's still the 29750 that is owed so if we go down to the bottom we see this 29750 if we keep going down you can also see the history so you can see that we have these three items for the history on uh, january 31st amount credited on february 18th and then you got the invoice information approved and when it was created as well so if we go back up top then we're going to be paying off that 297.50 uh, we're going to say that this is going to happen on the 26th so we'll pick up the 26th and we're going to pay that to the clearing account as well not going into the checking account at this time but the clearing account this should then increase that clearing account by the 297.50 the other side decreasing the accounts receivable that has now been paid let's go ahead and pay that amount go back up to the trustee trial balance we're going to update the trustee tb the trustee trial balance check that out by going first into the clearing account clearing account up top should now be increasing by this uh 297.50 that we have just put into it if we scroll on down we see that amount down here so that looks good and the other side is going to be decreasing the accounts receivable so here's the accounts receivable if we go into that item and scroll down there then we see that decrease of the 297.50 in that area as well let's go back on to the trial balance now what we're going to do is we're going to imagine we're going to the bank at the end of the day so at the end of the day we're now going to the bank and we have this much in the in the clearing account we're like holding on to those that cash you can imagine or checks or whatever form that we need to deposit them and we're going to go to the bank at the end of the day and put them into the bank and basically one lump sum group and that lump sum group we're imagining is going to be what is on the bank statement so that we can reconcile the bank statement and the uh, checking account. So in other words, we want to take all the deposits we have, group them together, put them into the checking account in the format in one lump sum or whatever sum that we believe is going to be on the bank statement so that we can then reconcile our bank statement once we get them into the checking account here. So that's what we will do now. We're going to actually make the deposit, which will basically just simply be a transfer. So I'm going to go back over to the first tab and we're going to say I want to hit the plus button up top and we're going to make a transfer. This money then now moving out of the clearing account. So it's going to be going from the clearing account. But this drop down will work for me. Here we go. It's going to be going from the clearing account here and it's going to be going to the checking account. We will do this as of I think what have we been working with the 26th. Let's do the 26th again. The amount then is going to be everything that's in the clearing account right now that we're walking over to the bank here, which is going to be the 1698.75. And you may want a reference there. You may like if you're holding on to these checks, you may you may want to put a reference and say that includes, you know, these four checks, maybe the amounts or who they're from or some type of reference. I believe it's going to be the 250 check amount, the 297.5 amount the 851.25 and we're like right these are the payments we can imagine that we we have in our hands that we're gonna that we're gonna take over and and deposit so then we're i'm gonna go ahead and transfer this out and so that will then make the adjustment that'll take it out of the clearing account and then bring it over to the checking account if we go back to the trial balance once i refresh what's going to happen that clearing account is going to magically disappear i'm predicting and the checking account will then be going up by the amount of the clearing account let's check it out let's go to the update and see if that does uh what we say it will it did see that the clearing account magically disappeared and then within the checking account if we go on into that checking account and see if it should then be increasing by that 1698.75 that we put into it that's what should happen so if we go down and we see the checking account does indeed go up by that 1698.75. So let's go back up, go back to the trial balance, and that's it for now. Let's get out of here.